Hello students. You all are welcome to this online learning platform with me. I am Shampanchal from Takshila Model Senior Secondary School. Students, today we have a very important topic of English grammar. We will have a detailed explanation of this topic in a systematic way. Why do you think it is a very important for us to have a systematic study of any subject, of any topic? It is essential so that we can understand each and every aspect of that topic. Because uh, uh, when we understand something in a systematic way, right, we begin from the very beginning. And when we start something from the very beginning, we have uh, an opportunity to understand that thing better. Because uh, there becomes a change, right? And uh, we are just holding on to each and every part of that chain. Similarly, I'm going to have uh, a detailed explanation of this topic in a systematic way. So, when we study systematic way, we will start with the smallest unit of any language. The smallest unit of any language. That is, what? Letter. As I told you, letter is the smallest unit of any language. English ki bhi sabse choti ikai, sabse choti unit ko hum kya kehte hain, letter kehte hain. There are 26 letters in English alphabet, right? A group of letters that makes complete sense is called what? It is called a word. What is a word? A word is a group of letters that makes complete sense, right? Now, a group of letters uh, that makes a complete sense is called a word. A group of words that makes a complete sense is called a sentence. Is called a sentence. So, it is a group of words which is complete sense. Sentence is actually a combination of subject plus predicate. Sentence is a subject or a predicate. Hota hai. Predicate kya hota hai? subject. Uh, we all know about right what is predicate predicate means verb plus object a combination of verb plus object is called predicate right for example Ravi plays cricket in this sentence Ravi is the subject and plays cricket as the predicate this is the verb, this is the object, right? And this sentence gives complete sense. There are three words and this group of three words actually makes complete sense. Or isiliye hum isko kya bol rahe Sentence bolte hain. Now, you might be confused ki mein clauses wale chapter mein aapko sentences kiyo bada raha right? Have patience, you will get to know why I'm telling all these things to you, right? These are very essential things, right? These are the basic things to understand classes. A group of words that makes complete sense is a, it's called a sentence, right? A group of words that make sense but not complete is called a phrase, right? What is a phrase? A phrase is a group of words that makes sense but not complete. For example, Ravi plays cricket in playground. So, in playground, this group of words makes sense but not complete. It will make sense only when it is added to a sentence. If we erase this part out, which part? If we erase this part out, this in playground makes no sense. Right? Agar hum in playground ko khali use kare, Ravi plays cricket ko hata de, to in playground makes no sense. Still, it is a group of words. It makes sense but not complete. So, such a group of words that make sense but not complete is called a phrase. Phrases hamare kuch prepositions se milkar bante hain, like in playground, at sunset, right? Uh, in the middle of these are called phrases. Next, हमारे पास आता है group of words that make sense. Next, हमारे पास आता है a group of words that is a part of a sentence. 
we have already given a sentence and this group of words is actually a part what it is a part a part of a sentence that has its own subject and predicate right एक ग्रुप ऑफ वर्ड्स दैट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ अ सेंटेंस एक ऐसा ग्रुप ऑफ वर्ड जो किसी सेंटेंस का ऑलरेडी पार्ट है और उस सेंटेंस का उस पार्ट का अपना एक सब्जेक्ट और प्रेडिकेट है उसे हम क्या कहते हैं दैट वी कॉल अ क्लॉज उसे हम क्या कहते हैं उसे हम क्लॉज कहते हैं राइट लेट मी राइट एन एग्जाम्पल फॉर यू Ravi knows a man who gives him fruits to eat. Ravi knows a man who gives him fruits to eat. In this sentence, Ravi knows a man. is actually a sentence and this who gives him fruits to eat this is a group of words that is a part of this sentence and it has its own subject in the form of who this is the subject and predicate gives him fruits is predicate मैंने कहा था आपको कि ऐसा ग्रुप ऑफ वर्ड्स जो किसी सेंटेंस का ऑलरेडी पार्ट है और उसका अपना सब्जेक्ट और प्रेडिकेट है जैसे कि इसमें ये ऑलरेडी सेंटेंस है रवि नोज अ मैन और ये ग्रुप ऑफ वर्ड्स यानी कि हु गिव्स हिम फ्रूट्स टू इट इस सेंटेंस का पार्ट है और इसका अपना सब्जेक्ट और इसका अपना एक प्रेडिकेट है ऐसे ग्रुप ऑफ वर्ड्स को हम क्या कहते हैं ऐसे ग्रुप ऑफ वर्ड्स को हम क्लॉज कहते हैं मीन्स दिस वन दिस वन इज अ क्लॉज राइट right? यहां तक मैंने आपको यह बताया कि एक क्लॉज क्या होती है क्लॉज को हम कैसे पहचान सकते हैं राइट right? सो so, <coughs> एक क्लॉज जो होती है वो ऑलरेडी एक सेंटेंस का पार्ट होती है उसका अपना एक सब्जेक्ट होता है इसका जो ये सब्जेक्ट है ये कंजंक्शन खुद भी हो सकता है या कंजंक्शन के बाद भी सब्जेक्ट आ सकता है बट द सिंपल थिंग इज दैट कि एक क्लॉज जो होती है इट ऑलवेज बिगिन विद अ कंजंक्शन ये हमेशा एक कंजंक्शन से स्टार्ट होती है राइट right? कंजंक्शन हम प्रीवियस क्लासेस में पढ़ चुके हैं कंजंक्शन हमारे पास कोऑर्डिनेटिंग सबऑर्डिनेटिंग राइट और कॉरिलेटिव कंजंक्शन होते हैं सो so, ये हमारी जो क्लॉज है इसके अंदर कंजंक्शन फिलहाल हमारे पास हु है और ये सब्जेक्ट का भी काम कर रहा है राइट हु एक ऐसा कंजंक्शन है जो हमेशा सब्जेक्टिव केस में होता है राइट उसके बाद कोई सब्जेक्ट आता नहीं है लेकिन अगर हम हुम का यूज यहाँ करते हैं तो शायद इसके बाद एक सब्जेक्ट आता राइट वहीं पर हमारा जो फ्रेज होता है वो एक सेंटेंस का पार्ट वो भी होता है लेकिन एक फ्रेज के अंदर ना तो एक सब्जेक्ट होता है और ना ही एक वर्क प्लस ऑब्जेक्ट कॉम्बिनेशन यानी दिस टाइप ऑफ कॉम्बिनेशन इज नॉट देयर राइट और नीदर इट बिगिन विद नॉट नॉट डज इट बिगिन विद कंजंक्शन ये कंजंक्शन से भी स्टार्ट नहीं होती और ना ही इसके अंदर कोई सब्जेक्ट और प्रेडिकेट होता है राइट right? और हमने सेंटेंस पढ़ लिया सेंटेंस हमारा यहाँ पर ये भी है सेंटेंस ये भी है और सेंटेंस ये भी है तो क्लॉज हमारी क्या होती है आज का टॉपिक जो हम पढ़ रहे हैं क्लॉज क्लॉज क्या होता है क्लॉज इज अ पार्ट ऑफ अ सेंटेंस दिस इज अ पार्ट ऑफ अटेंस दैट हैज इट्स ऑन सब्जेक्ट एंड प्रेडिकेट जिसका अपना सब्जेक्ट और प्रेडिकेट होता है एंड वॉट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग अबाउट क्लॉजेज दैट क्लॉज इज ऑलवेज बिगिन विद अ कंजंक्शन राइट अब मैं आपको एक चीज बता देता हूँ कि जो सेंटेंस जिस सेंटेंस का ये पार्ट है मीन्स दिस वन दिस इज कॉल्ड प्रिंसिपल क्लॉज दिस इज कॉल्ड प्रिंसिपल क्लॉज इसको हम प्रिंसिपल क्लॉज कहते हैं और ये जो क्लॉज है ये हमारी तीन टाइप की होती है राइट right? प्रिंसिपल क्लॉज uh, और ये हमारी इस टाइम पर ये हमारी सबऑर्डिनेट क्लॉज है हमारे टॉपिक में हमारे चैप्टर में सिलेबस में जो अभी है हमारे पास सबऑर्डिनेट क्लॉज है हम सबऑर्डिनेट क्लॉज के टाइप्स को पढ़ेंगे वैसे क्लॉज uh, जो होती है मेनली थ्री टाइप्स की होती है पहली प्रिंसिपल क्लॉज सेकेंडली कॉर्डिनेट क्लॉज और थर्ड होती है आपकी सबॉर्डिनेट क्लॉज प्रिंसिपल क्लॉज हमारा जो है बिल्कुल इंडिपेंडेंट सेंटेंस होता है फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस वन ये हमारा इंडिपेंडेंट सेंटेंस है इट इज एलिजिबल और सॉरी इट इज एबल टू गिव इट्स फुल मीनिंग विदाउट दी हेल्प ऑफ एनी अदर सेंटेंस और एनी फ्रेज एडिड टू इट इसलिए इसे हम प्रिंसिपल क्लॉज कहते हैं 
दूसरा हमारा सबॉर्डिनेट क्लॉज होती है जिसके अंदर सबॉर्डिनेटिंग कंजंक्शन हमारे जो होते हैं राइट right? उनका यूज इसके अंदर होता है लाइक एंड बट ऑल्सो और उसके बाद हमारे पास सबॉर्डिनेट क्लॉज होती है जिसके अंदर हमारा कंजंक्शन सबॉर्डिनेटिंग कंजंक्शन लगते हैं राइट right? uh, और इसमें तीन टाइप की क्लॉजेज हमारे पास सामने आती हैं तो हम सबॉर्डिनेट क्लॉज के तीन पार्ट्स को पढ़ेंगे जो हमारे सिलेबस में अभी दिया हुआ राइट लैक्स देखें सो स्टूडेंट्स यू वी हैव नाउन क्लॉज एडजेक्टिव क्लॉज एंड एडवर्क क्लॉज राइट सो वॉट इज अ नाउन क्लॉज एक नाउन क्लॉज क्या होता है नाउन क्लॉज इज एक्चुअली अ ग्रुप ऑफ वर्ड्स दैट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ अ सेंटेंस एंड हैज इट्स ऑन सब्जेक्ट एंड प्रेडिकेट एंड इट फंक्शन इज अ नाउन इन अ सेंटेंस सो नाउन क्लॉज इज अ ग्रुप ऑफ अ वर्ड्स दैट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ अ सेंटेंस दैट हैज इट्स ऑन सब्जेक्ट एंड प्रेडिकेट एंड डज द फंक्शन ऑफ अ नाउन सच अ ग्रुप ऑफ वर्ड्स इज कॉल्ड अ नाउन क्लॉज सो नाउन क्लॉज किस चीज का काम करता है इट फंक्शन इज अ नाउन सो एक नाउन क्या क्या फंक्शन करता है या फिर सबसे पहले हमें नाउन के केसेस को समझना होगा इफ यू वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड नाउन क्लॉज सो नाउन के केसेस क्या क्या होते हैं लेटर्स केसेस ऑफ नाउन सबसे पहला नाउन जो यूज होता है नाउन सब्जेक्ट टू द वर्ब यूज होता है एक नाउन ऑब्जेक्ट टू द वर्ब भी यूज हो सकता है और आपका जो नाउन है ऑब्जेक्ट टू अ प्रेपोजिशन भी यूज हो सकता है दो देर आर सिक्स केसेज ऑफ नाउन्स राइट छह केसेज होते हैं बट आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू टेल यू अबाउट थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ केसेज बिकॉज दीज थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ केसेज आर गोइंग टू बी यूज एंड क्लाउज ऑनली राइट सो सब्जेक्ट टू द वर्ब ऑब्जेक्ट टू द वर्ब और ऑब्जेक्ट टू अ प्रेपोजिशन वो कैसे होता है लेट मी जस्ट राइट एन एग्जाम्पल फॉर यू राइट एंड दिस एग्जाम्पल वी हैव यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस सो एग्जाम्पल हम लिखते हैं Manoj eats an apple. Manoj eats an apple. In this sentence, there are two nouns, right? Noun number one is Manoj. Noun number two is apple. This noun Manoj is actually used as a subject to the verb, and this noun apple is actually used as object to the verb. जो नाउन वर्ब से पहले आएगा वो सब्जेक्ट टू द वर्ब दिलाएगा वॉट इज इट कॉल्ड सब्जेक्ट टू द वर्ब जो नाउन वर्ब के बाद आएगा वो ऑब्जेक्ट टू द वर्ब कहलाएगा राइट ऑब्जेक्ट टू अ प्रेपोजिशन कैसे यूज होता है एक नाउन लेट मी राइट एन एग्जाम्पल हम फॉन्ड ऑफ एप्पल्स और आई एम फॉन्ड ऑफ ईटिंग एप्पल्स राइट सो हियर एप्पल्स इज द नाउन एंड दिस नाउन हैज बीन यूज आफ्टर अ प्रेपोजिशन सो दिस नाउन इज एक्चुअली गवर्ड बाय अ प्रेपोजिशन इस नाउन को प्रेपोजिशन के द्वारा गवर्न किया गया है एंड दैट इज वाई दिस नाउन इज सेट टू बी यूज इज ऑब्जेक्ट टू अ प्रेपोजिशन राइट सो एक नाउन इन तीन टाइप्स में से किसी तरीके से यूज हो सकता है राइट right? दो देर आर सिक्स टाइप्स अगेन आम टेलिंग यू राइट येट आम टेलिंग यू अबाउट ओनली थ्री नाउस हेयर बिकॉज दीज आर गोइंग टू बी यूज इन क्लासेस सो स्टूडेंट्स अब यहां पर हम ये समझते हैं कि एक नाउन क्लॉज को हम कैसे पता करें या फिर एक सेंटेंस में अगर हमें नाउन क्लॉज बनानी हो तो हम कैसे बनाएंगे सो ऑलवेज मेक इट अ पॉइंट कि एक नाउन क्लॉज हमें तभी मिलेगी एक नाउन हमें तभी मिलेगा वेन वी आस्क द वर्ब वॉट वेन वी आस्क द वर्ब क्वेश्चन वॉट वर्ब से आप क्वेश्चन करें What? जो भी आंसर आपको मिलेगा दैट सिंपली इज अ नाउन और अ नाउन क्लॉज फॉर एग्जाम्पल मनोज इट्स एन एप्पल वॉट डज मनोज इट मनोज इट्स एन एप्पल अंडरस्टूड समटाइम्स हु इट्स एन एप्पल मनोज इवन वेन वी पुट हु वेन वी आस्क हु इट्स एन एप्पल सो वी गेट द आंसर मनोज मीन्स वॉट एंड हु वेन वी आस्क द वर्ड वी गेट द आंसर एंड दैट इज अ नाउन और अ नाउन क्लॉज Now let me write an example of a clause. Let 
what he says is not true, right? So this is an example. In this example, we need to identify which one is a clause and what is the type of that clause. So uh, first of all, uh, we underline this sentence, what he says. And uh, I call this a clause. Why? Because a clause always begins with a conjunction. And here, what is conjunction? Subordinate clauses are framed with the help of subordinating conjunctions. Subordinating conjunctions. And subordinating conjunctions are Noun clause के लिए subordinating conjunctions जो होते हैं mostly wh family words होते हैं, right? Who, who, whom, which, that, why, where, right? Uh, adjective clause के लिए mainly five conjunctions होते हैं. I'll explain when I come over to this topic, right? And there is a wide range of conjunctions when we study adverb clauses, apart from wh family words. So noun clause के अंदर ज़्यादातर हमारे पास wh family words के ही conjunctions आने वाले हैं, right? So what और इसमें एक that भी आ जाता है and if uh, sorry that इसमें conjunction आ जाता है, right? So uh, what he says is not true. इस sentence के अंदर अगर हम देखें तो कैसे identify कर सकते हैं कि ये noun clause है? First is is the verb or is se pehle a karke ye subject ka kaam kar raha hai this group of words is actually doing the action of a subject and it is used before a verb so uh, subject to the verb so this group of words is used as subject to the verb hence it is a noun clause ye noun clause ho gaya dusra verb se aap puche what so what is not true what he says is not true ask the verb what is not true what he says is not true so there are two ways we can uh, there are two ways in which we can identify a noun clause. So we can say this is a noun clause. Let me uh, write one more example for you. That the earth revolves around the sun is a fact right uh, sorry again this is an example of subject to the verb I have written that the earth revolves around the sun is a fact here underline this group of words this is what that the earth revolves around the sun is a fact here is is the verb and this group of words is used as subject to the verb right hence it is doing the action of noun and uh, what is a fact that the earth revolves around the sun and here the conjunction is that as I told you here right uh, another example is <coughs> I know where he lives uh, now let us just take this sentence into consideration I know where he lives now can you identify the clause in this sentence, yes, where he lives, because it begins with the conjunction where. So where he lives, now we need to identify the type of this clause, whether it is noun, adjective or adverb clause. So what is the verb? Verb is no, and this group of words is actually used object to the verb, where he lives. Now ask the verb, what uh, do I know? What do I know? Where he lives is the answer. So, this, uh, the previously applied two criteria uh, we have used here also, right? And we have got what? A noun clause, right? So, uh, student, this is how we can understand a noun clause. A noun clause is either used as a subject to the verb or object to the verb, right? And ask the verb what, whatever you get as an answer, as an answer, this is called noun clause. Now, we are moving on to adjective clause. What is adjective clause? An adjective clause is a group of words that has its own subject and predicate and it does the action of an adjective. Just like noun clause is a noun ka action, karta hai. similarly adjective adjective ka action. Karta hai. Now what is an adjective? Adjective kya hota hai? An adjective 
ऐसा वर्ड होता है एडजेक्टिव इज अ वर्ड दैट इज यूज बिफोर अ नाउ राइट सपोज दिस इज अ नाउ सो एन एडजेक्टिव इज अ वर्ड दैट इज यूज बिफोर अ नाउ ये नाउ से पहले आता है मोडिफाइज द मीनिंग ऑफ नाउ ये नाउ के मीनिंग को जो है मोडिफाई करता है फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ ब्रेव बॉय राइट सो इन दिस सेंटेंस दिस वर्ड ब्रेव is actually the adjective here because it is modifying the meaning of the word boy what kind of boy what type of boy a brave boy right so another example is a mm, dark room in this sentence also oh sorry it's not a sentence in this group of words also dark is a is an adjective what type of room what kind of room dark room so these are the words which modify the meaning of noun hence they are called adjectives but in clause what happens this uh uh placement is actually inter uh, changed with each other right inter uh, interchange how for example noun plus adjective clause क्लॉज जब हम पढ़ते हैं तो एडजेक्टिव क्लॉज नाउन के बाद आता है राइट सो एडजेक्टिव क्लॉज उस नाउन के तुरंत बाद आनी चाहिए जिसको वो डिफाइन कर रही है फॉर एग्जाम्पल अच्छा अब मैं आपको पहले ये बता दूं, एडजेक्टिव क्या करता है एडजेक्टिव काम करता है मॉडिफाई करता है मीनिंग के नाउन को नाउन के मीनिंग को मॉडिफाई करेगी एडजेक्टिव क्लॉज एडजेक्टिव क्लॉज के कंजंक्शन जो होते हैं वो आपके कौन कौन से होते हैं आ, आपका हु होता है हुज होता है होम होता है विच होता है एंड दैट होता है एडजेक्टिव क्लॉज भी आपकी टू टाइप्स की होती है डिफाइनिंग एंड नॉन डिफाइनिंग राइट डिफाइनिंग एंड नॉन डिफाइनिंग क्लॉज इसके बारे में भी हम पढ़ेंगे पहले हम ये पढ़ते हैं कि ये जो कंजंक्शन हैं, इनसे जो है एडजेक्टिव क्लॉज हमारी बनती है और वो कैसे बनती है आइए We should have few examples. I met a man who helped me. I met a man who helped me. In this sentence, what is a clause? The same rule will be applied to it. This is a clause. Why? Because this begins with a conjunction. so this group of words is called a uh, clause because it begins with a conjunction now what kind of clause is this this is the question this group of words is actually defining the meaning of this noun which man i met a man who helped me which man did i meet i met a man who helped me so when you ask the verb uh, when you ask the noun which question which or what kind of you get an adjective clause so I met a man, which man, who helped me. So this who helped me is actually an adjective clause. Uh, let me write one more example. The boy who lives next door. has been arrested the boy who lives next door has been arrested in this sentence what is the clause the clause is who lives next door this is the clause why because this begins with a conjunction who the boy who lives next door has been arrested right so this is a clause now what kind of clause is this the boy which boy who lives next door means this group of words is actually uh, adding something to the meaning of the noun boy it tells it describes the word boy or the noun boy so which boy the boy who lives next door right so uh, then uh, let me just give you a few examples verbally uh, i know the place where he lives okay let me write two examples i know where he lives and i know the place 
where he lives. Now we have two examples, right? Uh, read these two examples, two sentences carefully. I know where he lives and uh, I know the place where he lives. Where he lives and where he lives. Uh, both are clauses and both are exactly the same, but still their types are different. How? I know where he lives. What do I know where he lives? When I ask the verb what, I get the answer where he lives. Hence it is called what? A noun clause. This is a noun clause. Now, I know the place where he lives. Which place? Now, it is not defining, uh, it is uh, not coming just after the verb. It is coming after the noun. The noun is the place. So, I know the place where he lives. Which place am I talking about? The place where he lives. So, this group of words, though, is exactly the same as this one, still does the uh, action, uh, still does a different action, right? It is uh, doing the action of what? It is doing the action of an adjective, hence it is called an adjective clause, right? So this one is an adjective clause and this one is a noun clause. So students, uh, similarly, whom, which, right? Uh, and that. Now, we will discuss defining and non-defining clauses. Okay, uh, uh, one more thing that I should tell you is who and who, whom and whose all uh, these these are called relative pronouns and these relative pronouns are actually used for persons or living things right uh, which is used for non-living things as well as birds and animals right uh, who and whose and whom uh, who and whom are used for persons whose for both living and non-living things which only uh, for non-living things birds and animals and that is used only uh, in the defining clauses, not in non-defining clauses. So that is used in defining clauses in place of who. Is that clear? Who uh, in place of who in defining clause only. So with the help of an example, I'll explain this to you. What is a defining and what is a non-defining clause? Let me write two examples on board. Here uh, we have two examples. My brother who has passed MA is coming to see me today and the parrot that I purchased has flown away. So uh, let us just take uh, a look at these two sentences. First of all, uh, we need to identify the clauses. The first clause is this one and in the second sentence the clause is this one. Now we need to tell the type of these clauses. My brother who has passed MA is coming to see me today. Both are uh, adjective clauses, right? How? Uh, which brother uh, who has passed MA and uh, which parrot that I purchased has flown away, right? So both are adjective clauses and adjective clauses are either defining or non-defining clauses. Now, which one is defining and which one is non-defining and how to identify these clauses, right? First of all, if we remove this clause from this sentence number one, what happens? Does a uh, uh, the does the meaning of the sentence change or not or doesn't it right let us see my brother is coming to see me today if we just remove this clause right this is just an additional information given about the subject and if we remove this clause the sentence is still giving right the complete sense or it is uh, able to give its meaning without the help of this clause right so this we come to know is actually an extra or additional information given about this subject, my brother. Uh, and uh, it does not, its removal does not actually affect the meaning of the sentence. Such a clause is actually called a non-defining clause because it does not restrict the meaning of the subject or it does not restrict uh, or it does not define the subject, right? Hence, it is called a non-defining clause. Always make it a point that a non-defining clause uh, is demarcated by commas. So here, this clause has been separated by commas. A non-defining clause is always separated by commas. And if we remove non-defining clause from the sentence, the sentence uh, is always able to give the complete sense. Now, let us remove this clause that I purchased from this sentence. What happens? The parrot has flown away. 
Now, when we read the parrot has flown away, the thing that comes in our mind is which parrot? What? Which parrot? Which parrot flown away? Which parrot has flown away means when we remove this clause from the sentence, the sentence stands incomplete or is, is not uh, able to give complete sense. Hence, this is called a defining clause because without the help of this clause, uh, this sentence stands incomplete or uh, this sentence is, uh, is not able to give the meaning, right? So, this is called a defining clause because it limits the meaning of this subject, uh, parrot. Which parrot? That I purchased. So, this clause is actually called a defining clause and a defining clause is not demarcated by commas, right? So, I hope that you have understood the difference between a defining and non-defining clauses, right? In your book, there are a lot of examples. When you go through them, definitely you will understand the difference between them, right? Uh, let me just give you uh, an example verbally. Sudha Chandran, who was a great dancer, uh, had an accident or uh, met with an accident and lost her life. Sudha Chandran, who was a great dancer, uh, met with an accident and lost her leg. So, in this sentence, the clause is who uh, Sudha Chandran, who was a great dancer. So, who was a great dancer? What type of clause is this? This is an adjective clause, but what type of clause? Is it defining or non defining clause? When we remove Sudha Chandran, uh, who was a great dancer, do not read who was a great dancer. Sudha Chandran uh, met with an accident and lost her leg. This is right. This gives complete sense. So, we come to know that uh, who was a great dancer is actually an extra information given about the subject. Hence, this is called a non-defining clause. Understood? So, we have understood now adjective clauses. Now, uh, we move on to what? Adverb clause. So, what is adverb clause? So, students, uh, first of all, let me just take a recapitulation. Noun clause, we just need to ask what? to the verb and for adjective clause we just need to ask what kind of or which right now let us move on to adverb clause what is an adverb an adverb is a word that modifies the meaning of a word how it modifies the meaning of a verb how ask the verb when you get the answer when you ask the verb when you get the answer and this is called adverb clause of time when you ask the verb uh, where you get the answer and this is called adverb clause of place when you ask the verb why right you get the answer and this is called adverb clause of reason when you ask the verb uh, uh, how right you get the answer and this is called adverb clause of manner right so let me just write you write an example on the board so that we can understand it uh, the example says come when you like right just you need to do one thing you need to find out the clause used in this sentence the clause is when you like right and uh, it is quite easy to understand for us or to find out the clause in a given sentence why is it a clause because it begins with a conjunction this is the subject and this is the verb right and this is also a part of this sentence come uh, do you think come is a sentence think yes come is a sentence why because come is the first form of the verb when a sentence begins with the first form of the verb this sentence is uh, said to be a part of imperative sentence. So this is an imperative sentence and this is this sentence is a part of this one Right, hence This is an adverb clause. How is this an adverb clause? Why is this an adverb clause? Because it modifies the meaning of the verb come When shall you come? Uh, when should you come? Ask the verb when You get the answer what? When you like. Hence it is a it is an adverb clause. Uh, let us let me write another example Another example says, because you have done this, I shall punish you. So this is example number two. Because you have done this, I shall punish you. Uh, so let us now underline the clause in this sentence. Because you have done this is the clause. Why? Because it begins with the conjunction because. So because you have done this, I shall punish you. And uh, uh, why shall I punish you? Ask the verb. Punish. Why shall I punish you? Why? 
because you have done this. So this is as adverb clause of reason. Asks why. This is adverb clause of a reason, right? So our uh, students, we can simply find out uh, the clauses given in a sentence, whether it is a noun clause, adjective clause, or adverb clause, right? So let us now understand these three types of clauses with five examples. So uh, here we have five questions on board. So let us try to understand these five questions, right? I know the man who is here. First of all, this who is here is the clause in this sentence. And what type of clause is this? This defines the meaning of this word, the man. This is the uh, subject, right? So uh, I know the man. Which man? Who is here? Hence, this is called an adjective clause, right? And uh, let us now move on to the second sentence. This is uh, what? Where are the friends whom I know? Where are the friends whom I know? Let us now first of all underline the clause. Whom I know is the clause, right? So, where are the friends whom I know? Again, uh, this clause actually defines the meaning of this word, the friends. So, this is also an adjective clause, right? The friends whom I know is an adjective clause. Now, he says that he met your brother. Point number, uh, question number third. Uh, he says that he met your brother. So, that he met your brother is the clause in this sentence because it begins with the conjunction, what? That. And uh, that is actually a conjunction for noun clause. So, uh, let us just first of all ask the verb says. So what does he say that he met your brother? When we ask the question what, what, we get the answer. And when we ask verb what and we get the answer, this is called what a noun clause. A noun clause. Hence, this one is a noun clause, right? So let us now move on to example number four. If I make a promise, I keep it. Here, if I make a promise is the clause. Why? Because it begins with the conjunction if. Right, a sentence uh, which begins with the conjunction if is actually called an adverb clause, adverb clause of condition. Right, so what is the condition? Only if I make a profit promise, I keep it. Right, uh, so only if I make a promise, I keep it. This is adverb clause of condition, so this is an adverb clause. Right, now let us move on to fifth question. He fled where his pursuers could not follow him. So, where his pursuers could not follow, right. Uh, him is also there. He fled where his pursuers could not follow him. So uh, his pursuers could not follow him. Where his pursuers could not follow him is the clause. And what type of clause is this? Where did he flee? Flee, fled, fled. So where did he flee? He fled where his pursuers could not follow him. So it modifies uh, the meaning of the verb. When we ask verb where, we, give, we get the answer. Where his pursuers could not follow him. So what type of clause is this? This is adverb clause right this is called adverb clause so students with this we have understood or we have discussed what the topic clauses right uh, i i'm sure that now you are able to identify different types of clauses right and uh, you are able to uh, just frame sentences with the help of clauses as well right you just need to do what you just need to identify a particular clause and you just need to ask the verb certain questions that i have told you and uh, this is how you just can identify the clauses right so students with this i come to an end and uh, very soon i'll be back with a new topic for you thank you very much